What is up everybody? Today is June 18th, 2020. Uh, today we're gonna try, you know, uh, a little bit of nighttime fishing right before the switch of the tide. Hopefully get some stripers. Um, I know there's been bluefish around, I know there's been flounder around, so you never know what you're gonna get. Um, I'll show you my rigs right now, so check it out. All right, so today we're gonna be doing a little bit of everything. So I, I'm gonna be heading out right, you know, an hour before sunset. It's gonna be a good tide to do a little bit of flounder fishing. So first thing I'm gonna be doing is, uh, you know, getting out to a spot and doing a few drifts with uh, my flounder rig, which I'll be going over in a second. After that, I'll probably be uh, striper fishing later at night once the sun sets. Um, it probably be broken down into two videos. So real quick, I'm just gonna show you the rig that I'm using for this video. Um, all it is is a I call it you know a high low rig but I've heard them call it tap dancer rigs or fluke rigs it's a half ounce uh, jig head at the bottom about a foot and a half of a liter and then a 3-0 gamagatsu hook octopus hook on uh, a, a dropper loop and then just a loop to tie to now it's very simple we got our 3-0 gamagatsu hooks We've got our half ounce jigs. Now you don't need these VMC sleek jigs. I just like them because of the eye and the color. Uh, I've actually had a lot more success early in the season using just plain lead heads like Kalins. But you know everybody's got preferences. I don't I don't think that there's a huge difference in using like a painted jig over a, a you know a you know lead head. But I still have these sleek jigs that I picked up in the winter time and. I want to kind of burn them off before I start, you know, moving into other stuff. For leader, you don't really need much that's crazy. Uh, I know guys swear by fluorocarbon. I use fluorocarbon for certain fish, but I've done well using this, you know, Walmart brand 20 pound test monofilament line for, you know, 250 yards. I think it cost me three or four dollars, which is a steal because I'll never burn through this in a year. Um, but once we do get out there we're just going to probably throw a this rig out with some gulp i'm going to kind of do two test rods i'll probably do one with swimming mullet one with the jerk shads and uh hopefully we'll get on some flounder so stay tuned all right so i'm dropping my line down i'm gonna do a little bit of jigging oh fish on what the whoa Oh, uh, we got ourselves a flounder, man. Uh, uh, we're gonna let this guy go. That's, well, no skunk. All right, so we've already had one fish. Now I'm gonna just uh, <clears throat> hopefully find some stripers. I mean, I'm not mad. I literally dropped that down just to kind of, I saw something on my, my depth finder. I thought it was a striper, but it ended up being a flounder, but we're gonna just slow work this gulp back to the boat. Fish on. This feels small. Two casts, two, dude, what? Another flounder. Dude, I'm, I'm literally <clears throat> fishing this, you know, suspended off the bottom. That's kind of crazy. But two flounder, two casts. So let's see what else is out there. Now, uh, I don't think I mentioned it in my last video but i have slowed down production recently and uh there's two really main factors with that uh during you know the the heat of the pandemic i had a lot more time to go fishing um right now i've uh you know begun working a lot more um and most of my days i'm doing like 16 to 18 hour shifts so unfortunately it's kind of cut down my fishing time drastically and the other one is just uh you know being around for my daughter um you know she's only a year old and i don't want to you know miss out on a ton of milestones uh so you know if you do notice the production of my videos has been a lot slower recently but uh, i'm still going to try my best to get out as many as i can right now i'm shooting for once one a week um you know that i think that's attainable with my work schedule right now but you know i am trying my best
All right, so right now I'm just jigging the bottom as we slowly drift. The tide is moving pretty slow right now. It's like perfect speed. I think I'm more to my depth finder. We're drifting about. Uh, looks like like three quarters of a knot, almost a half knot. Hoping that, you know, there might be some fish here. Fish on, fish on, baby. This feels nicer. Feels like it actually feels like a bigger flounder, honestly. Oh yeah, bigger flounder. Not a keeper, but Let's get this bad boy back in the water. So three flounder so far. Open for a multi-species night, so we'll see. <clears throat> we'll see if we can pull it off. I am marking fish right under the boat. Not sure what. But there's definitely plenty of fish right where I'm at. There was a hit. Oh, there we go. There's some. Ah, uh, getting bigger. But that is also what we would call heartbreak on a hook right there. Not big enough to take home. But you know what? It's a fish, right? So we're not gonna be mad. We're gonna let him go. Now, what I notice about this rig is half the time i'm getting fish on the top hook half the time i'm getting it on the bottom oh fish on like that this is definitely a flounder uh, hey i'll tell you what man they are getting bigger that's the only good i mean you know when your first flounder you catch is 10 inches everything is going to get bigger if you get what i'm saying but They are a beautiful looking fish. Both eyes on one side. Oh, look at that. He's got a little grass shrimp in his mouth. I know uh, when I'm filleting them, a lot of times I'm finding crabs and shrimp, man. But, and minnows and spearing and all that good stuff. But I do find though, it's like a 50-50 with uh, where you're catching them on the top hook or the bottom. Now. What I think is, and I learned a lot of flounder fishing through uh, John Skinner, if you ever watched him on YouTube, and he does like underwater videos of flounder up in the Long Island Sound, and it's really neat to see because you see these flounder following the bait for a while, and sometimes when they're laying flat on the bottom like that, they see the, you know, the bait suspended up. Oh, fish on, oh, just dropped them. Just had one though. Literally feels like this entire drift as soon as you get at the bottom, like it, it's got to be paved with fish right now. Now, if you're like me, you don't have a trolling motor, so you're kind of forced to you fish you know the tide game and what i mean by the tide game is you know 
some guys go out there flounder fishing and they'll fish every every hour of the day and they wonder why they're not catching fish you know certain hours now what i've always found is if you're drifting too quick if you have too quick of a drift i've never had great success now what i consider too quick is anything over like two knots now i've caught fish fast drifting but i do find that when you can get anywhere from that half half a knot to a knot you can cover ground effectively and you're not worried about you know are you drifting too fast is the you know the fish able to actually attack the bait and get to it but while i got you know good tide right now i got maybe 30 minutes where it should be like this um and once the tide does switch we're gonna probably switch up what we're doing but for right now i mean it seems like as soon as you drop it to the bottom you're having fish so you know they're not huge but they're fish you know what i mean and i'd rather i'd honestly rather catch fish than you know just sit here casting but it's kind of crazy man the fog really rolled in all right so i just rigged up another rod i'm gonna try two at a time this one's got two uh five inch jerk shads so we're, we're talking big baits so might might not catch anything on it but if we do it should be you know pretty nice sized fish and i still got the other one with the i got the other one oh, let me put that in my legs oh feels like i'm getting a hit on the other one as i just dropped this yep fish oh he dropped it now the rod to my right's got a much bigger bait hoping that you know if there's something bigger down there might entice them you know the five inch you know jerk shad is much much bigger than the you know four and three inch um, swim malts that i'm using on my left but what i do find with the jerk shads is you kind of have to work them a little bit harder just because there's not as much action with the split tail where you know with the grub you got a ton of just constant vibration and motion fish on on the jerk shot baby a little bit bigger all right man that thing inhaled it now before you get up in arms you know he's hooked perfectly in the side of the mouth when i say inhaled it i mean he ate the bait I, you know i don't mean i gut hooked him but that's a good sign get him back in the water that was on the five inch now a few things um flounder are ambush predators so if you're gonna target them you gotta look for you know a few things one i look for different contours on the bottom and what do i mean by that like when you get you know spots that go from a channel to a flat i find that those fish just hang there because they can ambush you know grass shrimp minnows crabs anything that gets washed by them with the tide um so big key with flounder fishing you want to fish smart uh not hard you know what i mean if if you can just set up a drift you know that you're going to cover that type of ground it'll make your life a lot easier uh, another thing you want to do too is factor in the wind i see a lot of guys when they fish that do not factor in the wind you know and they they wonder why they're not getting the correct drift now if you have a trolling motor you're, you don't know what i'm talking about because you could always get a perfect drift but if you're just you know regular average joe like me you know you kind of depend on knowing how to play the wind and you know tide game there we go just drop the jerk shad down Ooh, just noticed that my swim mullet hooked its tail that does happen a little bit i drop the swim mullet down now so far we've had more fish on the swim mullet but i've only you know fished that jet uh jerk shad for about half a drift so we'll see what seems to be more productive i got you know bright colors uh here's another thing you know if you're fishing for flounder you definitely want to maximize you know 
what you're doing by varying the colors. Now, I've always found that, you know, chartreuse and pink, bright colors like that really do well in like chocolatey, dark, you know, very uh, non-clear water. I find that like sardine and like white works uh, a little bit better when you're in clear water. I don't know what it is. I think sometimes with that chartreuse in that real dirty water, the fish are, you know, unable to really see it unless it's dropped right on their head. Getting a hit on the jerk shad, but it, it just dropped it. Thought we were gonna get a nice little sunset tonight, but fog uh, decided to roll in. I don't know what it is with fog in my last few trips, but I seem to pick the perfect nights for, you know, fog. Fish on. Ooh. This was on the swimming malt, little guy. We're gonna get him back in. Nice thing about these uh, VMC hooks and gamagatsu hooks is very rarely with this fishing style are you gonna gut hook a fish and kill it. Um, especially with, you know, an undersized fish, you, the worst thing you could do is, you know, gut hook it and then throw it back. I mean, you know, the survival rate of that, of a fish that's, you know, swallowing it all the way down past the gills is very, very low, so, you know. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video um, and learned something new. As always, uh, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And if you're not a subscriber to the page, please join the page. Click subscribe down below. I'll see you guys soon.